Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show, but I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting, and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now, and I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program. Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show. But I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting, and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now, and I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program. You're listening to the Think Unbroken podcast, and I'm your host, Michael Unbroken. I'm an author, speaker, coach, and advocate for adult survivors of childhood trauma and abuse. In this podcast, you will learn how to transform your trauma into triumph, turn breakdowns into breakthroughs, and go from victim to being the hero of your own story. You can learn more at thinkunbrokenpodcast.com, and of course, check us out on Apple Podcasts and Spotify at Think Unbroken Podcast. My name is Michael Anthony, and I am an author, international speaker, and advocate for adult survivors of child abuse. And on my channel, I like to talk about things that are relative to me, my own experience in my own life. And today I want to talk to you about how to survive the holiday season when you have been a survivor of child abuse. And you're probably like, there's a lot of surviving going on. Well, there is. And I think we always are. And every day is just an effort we make to survive a little bit longer. It is just the human capacity. If you're like me, growing up, the holidays for you were always a nightmare. Probably dreaded them and were constantly in a place of like, why do I have to do this? Why do I have to be a part of the holiday? Why do I have to see my family? Why do I have to show up? Why, why, why? And that was most of my experience growing up. Why is it that I always have to be in these situations that I don't want to be in? Most holidays are very volatile. People get drunk, adults get mad at each other, they get mad at you, we're invisible as children, there's so many, and the list goes on and on, I'm sure that you can relate. Well, we are no longer children, and thus it is our responsibility to take up our agency and our capacity to take up space, to be seen, to be heard, or to not. This is the most amazing thing about being an adult that we often forget about, is that We don't have to do anything that we don't want to do, and especially when it comes to family, and especially when it comes to the holiday season. You know, I will never forget the the most insane Thanksgiving ever. There was a girl I had a huge crush on my 16th year, 17th year, and I had her come over to the house, and I was really excited about it, and my mother, who, as many of you know, have listened to this and seen my videos before, knows that she was a drug addict and alcoholic, came barreling out of the bathroom, face drunk, and I'm standing there with this girl I have a huge crush on and witnessing her being mortified as my mother sits down at the kitchen table 
and then boom, face first, smashes right into the bowl of mashed potatoes. I wish that I could make this up, but it is so true. And for years after that, I was like, I don't want to go to Thanksgiving. I don't want to go to holidays. I don't want to be around my family. And I think we live in a society where people are often triggered and that can mean a lot of different things. And that's not what this is about. This is more about like, how do you deal with that? How do you deal with being around your family who might be, you know, overbearing, critical, crazy, triggering, whatever word that we want to use. And I think the first thing that we have to consider is do we actually have to show up? There is no rule anywhere that I've ever read, that I've ever seen, that I've ever signed a contract for that says, oh yeah, it's Thanksgiving, it's Christmas, it's 4th of July, it's whatever holiday, you must be there. That is our agency. It is our choice and our decision whether or not we want to go and show up and be a part of family events. If you know that you are going to go to grandpa or grandma's house, uncle or aunt's house, or your own parents' home, your brother's, your sister, it doesn't matter who, and you know that on the backside of that, you are going to be miserable, you're going to be upset, you are going to be in a situation where you get home and you go, why did I go? Why am I here? Why am I part of this? Then I would tell you the first thing that you can do is just not show up. That's okay. And like, here's what happens. People go, well, I have to show up. They're my family. You don't have to do that. There are no rules that say that you have to do that. If your family is loving and supporting and you're going to have a good time and it's happy and it's a place of joy that you want to be, then yes, absolutely. Please show up. Please go and be a part of community. Be a part of family. Be a part of support systems. But don't show up because you think that you have to. That's one of the worst things that happens in society right now, and especially in Western culture and especially in America. Somehow it's embedded on us that we have to show up to family gatherings and events when in reality we just don't. So the first thing you have to ask yourself is, do I really want to? The next thing that you have to ask yourself is, okay, if I am there, if I decide to show up, how do I manage being there? If you are in recovery or if you are in a situation where people are getting drunk and you don't want to be around that, I don't think that if you show up, it's rude for you to excuse yourself. If you show up and everyone's drunk watching the football game and talking shit and doing all those things and you feel uncomfortable, excuse yourself, leave, like literally go, go somewhere where you feel like you have the capacity to continue to be on a journey of health. So many people relapse this time of year, and it's not necessarily just because of the stress of being around your family or friends, but it's also because you're in these situations where you're right around the things that trigger you. And, you know, the easy solution for so many people is to grab the bottle, to grab the pipe and to settle back down into old behaviors because it feels good, right? And especially when you have the pressure of being around your family. So think about this. If you do go, it's not rude to leave. One of the other things that you can do is when you get to holiday events, take a couple of minutes, sit in your car, stand outside on the corner, wherever, just gather your thoughts, close your eyes, take a few deep breaths and think about the intention that you want to set to go in. And that might sound weird. Like, why would I set an intention for a holiday event, for a family event? Here's why. Because you know the way that you are going to present yourself in that scenario. You know how you are going to show up, not only for yourself, which is prominent and the most important, but also how are you going to show up for the other people there? Do you want to be someone who is happy and jovial? We'll be right back to the show. But before we do, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Factor Mills. Dot com, where if you go to factormills.com slash unbroken50 and use the code unbroken50, you can get 50% off your first order. That's factormills.com slash unbroken50. If you're like me and you are a person who is busy trying to create a life, heal, work on their health, wealth, and relationships, and not to mention deal with the day-to-days of normal life, you do not have time to be going to the grocery store and trying to figure out what you're going to cook every single day of the week. In fact, one time I did the math and I realized I was spending over 15 hours a week at the grocery store and cooking. When I added factor, I got to use that time for myself, for my family, for my friends, for my community, and for my business. And so if you're in the place where you need some more support in the kitchen, head to factormills.com slash unbroken50 and use the code unbroken50 to get 50% off. And is going to let silly jokes slide 
Or are you going to get upset over every little thing that happens? And I'm not saying it's right or wrong, whichever way that you go, but think about what is most important to you as you're stepping into it. And the holidays are this place where we know people are going to say stuff that pisses us off. It's just going to happen. Whether it's a political thing or a religious thing or a what are you wearing thing or you gained too much weight or lost too much weight or are you smoking again? Are you not smoking or this or that? Whatever that thing is, our family, they know how to push our buttons. Like I love my brothers so much. Like I truly do, but they know how to push my buttons and I know how to push theirs. And that's just a part of it. And so in years that have passed, I've come to find that by taking this time to really think about my intention, to put myself in a calm state of mind, to breathe, to meditate, to concentrate, to set intention, I can handle situations that used to make me upset. I can handle situations that used to trigger me in an easier fashion because I've just kind of set the precedent for what it is that I expect going forward, right? And I think the last point and probably the most important thing is to set boundaries, right? I think a lot of a part of setting intention is also setting boundaries. How is it that we want other people to engage and interact with us? You know, there should be things that are off limit topics of conversation at the dinner table with your family. I don't think that you owe anyone anything when it comes to conversation. Do you want to be clear? Do you want to be concise? Do you want to be in tune with who you are? Absolutely. I never will argue that. But I don't think that you have to get involved in conversations that you don't want to be in. And again, this is another option for you to exit, right? Exit stage left. Your family is in a conversation about something that you know bothers you. Maybe it's a past behavior of yours. Maybe it's something that you're working on changing. Maybe it's the political landscape of America in 2019 heading into 2020. Whatever that thing is, you have the option to say, you know what, guys, I don't want to talk about this. And that is your agency. I want you to step up for yourself this holiday season and set boundaries and say no. And no is a complete sentence. Look it up. I didn't make this up. No is a complete sentence. You don't owe anyone anything. You don't have to have these conversations if you don't want to have them. And if they continue and they nudge and they push and they go, oh, come on, let's talk about this or hey, this thing or that thing, leave. Leave. Guys, I'm telling you right now, there is no rule that says you have to stay because I want us to be in connection with our family. And I'm not just giving you outs, right? Because you're kind of uncomfortable about things, I don't necessarily think that's a reason to leave. But if you're getting pushed to the brink of being upset, of crying, of breakdown, of the things that you hate about being around your family, I think it's okay to bail. That's not a big deal, right? Ultimately, I want to give you strength to go through the holiday season and say, this is how I feel about things. I'm okay with this. I'm not okay with this. I need to remove myself just for my own self, because we have to put ourselves first. There's nothing wrong. I will always come back to the phrase oxygen mass, right? When I go and I look back at that story with the mashed potatoes and my mother almost 20 years ago, this is so long ago now, I think about that. If I would have had set better boundaries, that may not have happened. And given I was a child, I didn't know better. But now as an adult, I do. And if I were in a situation even remotely close to that, where I know I'm going to be entertaining someone that I care about around my family, who my mother now is deceased. I don't have to worry about that. That's not going to happen unless a ghost falls into the mashed potatoes. Um, but <laughs> I want to make sure that a couple things happen. One, I prepare the person around me. I go, hey, look, my family is kind of like X and your family is going to be like X. And so like lay that out. Don't let them walk into a hurricane. I think that's one of the worst things that can happen when you're around Friends, partners are in relationships and you get introduced into families and you're like, whoa, what is happening? Um, so prepare them and prepare yourself and prepare your family and say, these are the things that are acceptable and these are not. And if you cross these boundaries, I am leaving. The person with me is leaving. We are going and we're not coming back and we're not going to Christmas and we're not coming to New Year's and we may never talk to you again because ultimately what this all comes down to at the end of the day is two things. One, the agency that you have for yourself for setting boundaries and the things that you want out of community, out of relation, out of being around your family, friends, neighbors, all these people at this time of year. And two, putting yourself in a situation where you are not blatantly hurt, embarrassed, or stepped on, which happens all too often around the dinner table this time of year. So I hope that you have an amazing holiday season. I hope that your family is amazing. 
I hope that you call that aunt that you haven't called in a long time. I hope that your turkey or your tofurkey or your stuffing, whatever it is that makes you happy, makes you happy this holiday season. And remember that at the end of the day, no matter what, the only thing that we're trying to do is just be happy, is be content, is set our boundaries and be seen and be heard and take up the space that we deserve to take up. And especially if you have been someone who's felt invisible over the course of your lives, now's your time. And I believe that for you. So until next time, my friend, be unbroken. Check out thinkunbroken.com slash paperback for Think Unbroken, Understanding and Overcoming Childhood Trauma, my new book that is available for pre-order right now with over $1,000 in bonuses that releases on January 1st, 2020, because we're starting the new decade, Unbroken, my friends. I'll see you soon. Thank you so much for listening to Think Unbroken. Please share this episode with someone who could use it and help us move forward in our mission of ending generational trauma in our lifetime. And if you would, please take five seconds to pop on iTunes or Spotify, hit that five star, leave a review, and you can also reach out to us on social at Michael Unbroken or at Think Unbroken. And of course, you can check out our YouTube channel at Think Unbroken. Thank you for being a part of Unbroken Nation, my friends. And until next time, be unbroken. Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show. But I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now and I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program.